This video follows on from a previous one where I looked at the basic features of fixed income securities. So I'm taking all that for granted. I'm gonna go straight in here and look at, from a holder's point of view, some of the rewards and point out one or two of the risks. So with no more ado, what affects fixed income security prices? Well, there are two main factors, interest rates and time remaining until maturity. And very simple, worth bearing in mind that the relationship between interest rates, that's general rates of interest, and fixed income security prices on a sort of seesaw diagram, if you like, is as follows. It's inverse. As interest rates rise, fixed income security prices tend to fall and vice versa. There's the, the wheel on my seesaw. All right. And that is simply because they're fixed income securities. What I mean by that is if you're being offered a fixed income security with a coupon rate of 5% and a bank were to pay you 10, you'd want the bank account. You know, why take the little bit of extra risk in a fixed income security? Because you want the bank account, people would tend to sell fixed income securities. That's going to tend to push the price down. Equally, if you're looking at a bank account that only pays you 1%, more realistic, you might say, and a fixed income security offers 5, that's going to tend to move the price up. So the higher rates of interest almost, if you like, on competing products, okay, the lower fixed income security prices tend to be and vice versa. Worth bearing in mind. Here's another important relationship. The closer you are to the redemption date of a fixed income security, right, the nearer to its £100 nominal value it will tend to trade. And don't forget, fixed income securities have a fixed redemption date, have a fixed redemption value. So diagrammatically, if you want to see it this way, if there's a hundred pounds, okay, and the other axis is the, the sort of market price of a fixed income security, as you move in towards redemption or maturity, the price volatility tends to ease off. All right. Now remember, the market sets the price of these things. It can be above or below the face or nominal or par value of a hundred pounds. The point being, if you're 30 years away from redemption, then frankly, interest rates can have quite a big bearing on the price of fixed income security. If maturity is in the next week or redemption is in the next week, then frankly, interest rates have a much lower impact because people know that the security will be redeemed for £100. And those two factors can be combined into a term I'll just mention here, you may find used by your broker and on reports and so on, duration. Right, the sensitivity of the price of a fixed income security to a change in interest rates summed up in duration, that's quite important. Now, other factors. It's not all about interest rates and the time remaining to maturity. Other factors can have a big impact on certain types of fixed income security. For example, government IOUs, a big proportion of government IOUs, the fixed income securities, those have been attractive recently after the credit crisis as a safe haven. So simply the fact of people piling in, looking for a safe home for their money, has driven up prices. Also, quantitative easing, QE impact, pretty exotic sounding phrase, that's central banks printing money to buy fixed income securities. Again, if they do that, that's going to tend to drive up the price. And we'll see that impact uh, in just a moment. Okay, <clears throat> measuring your return. That's the background stuff so far. As someone buying a fixed income security, there are two basic ways. Two basic ways, and then some twists, which I'll cover in future videos, on how to measure your return. There is, first of all, the flat yield or the income yield or the coupon yield. That's for people buying these things, looking mainly at them as a source of income. All right, and a lot of people do that. If you were to buy a bond at, at issue and hold it through to maturity, you're not going to be worried too much about price fluctuations in, in the meantime because you know you're going to hold it through to its redemption value of £100. Income might be what you're mainly interested in. But because the price of these things can fluctuate, above or below that £100 nominal value, be aware that there is another calculation called the GRY, Gross Redemption Yield, or the Yield to Maturity, the YTM, lots of jargon here, which is your total pre-tax return, if you want to see it that way, hence the word gross, factoring in any capital gain or loss. So how would that work? Quick snapshot, normally these numbers are handed to you, I'm going to take a shortcut on the calculator in the second one just to give you a flavour of how that works. So let's have a look at it. Let's take a 5%, that's the coupon rate, 
So five pounds per year is your coupon bond with 10 years to run, trading at 110 pounds. They're trading above nominal value. People have been buying it, pushing the price up. So it's currently trading the market above nominal value. How would the flat yield look? Nice and simple. The flat yield, I call it the FY, is simply your annual coupon, five pounds, as a percentage of the price you've got to pay to buy the thing. So very, very straightforward. Five pound as a percentage of 110 is four and a half percent. I'll stress, I'll go quickly here because this is normally done for you, but it's worth being aware of where the numbers have come from. Is that the full picture though? Where does that factor in the fact that if you pay 110, hold it through to maturity, you'll only get 100 back? Well, it doesn't. You're losing a pound a year somewhere, and that needs to be factored in to give the full picture. So the gross redemption yield, as I'm going to call it, basically says, <clears throat> if I were to take the flat yield, 4.5%, and make an adjustment, knock off, in effect, a pound a year, bit of a simplification here, I'm ignoring time value of money and so on, but it'll do for our purposes here. If I were to factor in the fact I'm losing a pound a year as a percentage of the market price, what would that do to my flat yield? And the answer is, if I take off a pound a year as a percentage of the current price, so bit of a mess, but you know, all of that goes in brackets, that comes out to about 0.9%. Bear with me on this one, negative. So overall, this is my important point, I'm down to about 3.6. Now, no one's gonna ask you to do that in practice, but here's the point. Because this bond trades above nominal value, 110 is above 100, the gross redemption yield factoring in, or losing a pound a year, is below the flat yield, and that will usually be the case. If a bond trades below par, opposite relationship, your total return will be higher than your flat yield. Okay, so there you have it. And bear in mind that second calculation is a slight simplification. Now, uh, before we take a look at sort of risks, because we looked at returns so far, just reiterate a point I made about what the rush into a safe haven and quantitative easing, central banks buying fixed income securities, can do to yields, okay? So, you know, out in the real world, here's the 10-year gilt yield, watch what happens. Remember, safe haven status, central banks buying these things up, drives up the price, drives down the yield, and bang, there it is. All right, if we were to look at, you know, the credit crunch sort of onwards, 2007, 2008, there go, not in a straight line, admittedly, there go, yields on 10-year government IOUs, with a little bit of a kick up more recently, as people have said, actually, do we need to pile in to, to safe haven? You know, is the world actually not about to end? All right, but you can see there fear, to some extent, and quantitative easing being reflected in IOUs. And of course, um, that's something that's only started to change just recently. Now, government intervention, if you want to see it that way, or central bank intervention, and other people piling into these things aren't the only sort of risks because out in the corporate market, you know, other things can happen. Issuers can go bust, coupons can be deferred, much less likely on um, highly rated government paper, but it can happen. So that's where I just want to mention, to finish off this video, the role of the credit ratings agencies. If you want a quick snapshot, and you'll see these on reports and mention the press, if you want a quick snapshot, broadly speaking, as to how safe um, an IOU might be in the fixed income market, one way of getting it is to look at uh, the rating given to it by Moody's, S&P and Fitch, and they normally broadly agree on their opinion about how safe these things are. That opinion's given as a, a rating, AAA, pretty damn safe, through to D, very, very risky, D for default, if you like, and effectively what they're saying is the closer to AAA you are, the less likely it is that there's gonna be some sort of problem with either the IOU itself or the issuer. All right, more about that in future videos, but hopefully this one's given you a snapshot on how to measure your returns and how to assess risk.